Well, we knew it was going to be a movie, and a movie it was. You had the final score, Texas 31, Washington 37 in the college football playoff game. If you're Texas, a lot of emotions, uh, most of which probably being disappointment that you were, oh, I don't know, less than 15 yards away from finding your way to Houston for a national championship berth. But even so, there's a lot to unpack with this game. And then let's take a look at the future for Texas, because I think that probably deserves a little bit of consideration as you close the chapter on what was the 2023 season for Texas. First things first, though, y'all know the deal. Make sure you're subscribed. The season may be coming to a close. This show talks college football every single day, live three times a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. We appreciate y'all being dialed in. Also, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, at Judy Piquel. Thanks so much in advance for that. So if I'm Texas, man, the most frustrating thing that I think you're probably feeling right now is that Texas had every tool required to win a game like this. Because what do we say going in? They're going to have to be able to score with Washington. You had two NFL wide receivers, an NFL tight end, an NFL quarterback in Quinn Ewers to be able to do that. Had to be able to kind of stop the run against Washington. You outrushed Washington in this game. Your defense up front at least held up their end of the bargain. You knew Roma Dunze was eventually going to get his. Michael Penix was going to get his. That's, that's not a surprise. But you had all the firepower to keep pace. And you felt like you could probably make a play or two there to find a way to get leverage and then ultimately slow the game down. Because Texas did, again, they outrushed Washington. I think they had somewhere close to 180 yards rushing to Texas. So you had the tools. But in a game like this, man, when you play a team like Washington, with as, as dynamic as they are offensively, the margin for error is essentially zero. So you can't play the style of game you did, which is turning the football over not once, but twice, two fumbles on the ground, and you got to be more efficient through the air. Quinn Ewers, as good as he was late in the game, 55, 56% completion percentage. It's not going to be good enough when you got Michael Penix Jr. on the other side of the field. you got to be able to hold serve a little bit more in that kind of a game. So they had the players, again, Adonai Mitchell, defied gravity at certain points during this game. Xavier Worth, you know what you got with him. But you can't give Barry Bonds extra at-bats, and Barry Bonds obviously being the Washington offense. So that's this game. It hurts. Even with the errors you had in this game, you still took it down to the final drive, had a couple shots at the end zone to win it. And there's heartbreak there, understandably so. But I want us to still view this thing through the perspective of what we were talking about with Texas, I don't know, July? Big 12 media days, what we were saying about Texas, all the pressure on Texas. And I'm not excusing what happened right now. I also, I don't want, if you're a Texas fan, for you to totally just turn the page on this and say, oh yeah, whatever, look to next year. No, no, no. This year deserves a lot of attention. How you're feeling right now, the disappointment, a lot of other fan bases don't get to feel that disappointment right now because they were watching your team from the comfort of their own home. Meanwhile, you were rooting with every fiber of your being for your team because they were playing a football game in the college football playoff. That means something now. So let's zoom out. This year is still a massive success. And I'm not here to be rah-rah, moral victory, you know, pat yourself on the back for a good year. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying, if if I told you at the beginning of the season, go back to Big 12 media days, and I told you, hey, Texas is going to win the Big 12 and be in the college football playoff and have really respectable showing in the college football playoff. I think nine, nine and a half out of Texas fans would take that without question and say, awesome, great year. Let's head to the SEC. Playoff expands the year after. Let's roll. And oh, by the way, Quinn Ewers, at the time of us recording this, is giving every indication that he's going to come back. That's not 100% solidified, but reports are he's about 90%. So like, that's got to feel good too. And oh, by the way, you're on the verge now of running through the finish line with not one but two top three classes in back-to-back years under Steve Sarkeesian. I think Texas is in great shape. I think Texas is in a phenomenal spot right now. And I understand the frustration. I understand all that. But you look at how Steve Sarkeesian has built this thing up. Yes, the roster. Yes, Arch Manning's behind Quinn Ewers would likely get another year to learn the system and be able to take over when the time's right. Like We understand all that from the roster side of things. But take a look at how Texas finished tonight. We've said it throughout the course of this season, but we'll say it one more time because this is one more example of Texas having a different engineering to their makeup. This Texas roster, they're not just talented. They care about the right things. 
They fought through the finish. They got down 13 to Washington. Another thing you can't do against an offense like that. Got down and still with 45 seconds, rallied the troops, had a chance to go finish it in that final drive. Like th- there was no quit, no, no die in this team at all. All right. And so I think going back to what we just said, Steve Sarkeesian has now pushed Texas, pushed their standards internally now to caring about these, these right things, winning, development, team first, team over self, like all those things. You're seeing that reflected in this team. I think you saw it reflected again tonight, even in a loss. So it hurts. Let it hurt. You've earned the right for it to hurt. It matters. That's why it's frustrating. Then at the end of the day, like I was just saying now, if you're a Texas fan, a lot of other fan bases are watching your team play on New Year's Day. So for Texas, I fully expect them to be more than fine moving to the SEC. I fully expect them to be back in contention for a 12-team playoff spot. And it's going to be a lot of fun now. Texas, they're going to be fine. But again, this one hurts. Let it hurt. And uh, when you look up a few days from now, I think you have a lot to be proud of with your football team. Keep it locked right here. Again, follow me on the socials, at Jody Paquel, Twitter, Instagram, all that. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.